In this video, I'm going to be explaining the NEC3 Engineering and Construction Contract. Now, I've used this contract for well over a decade, and I know that it's not the same as other traditional forms of contract. We're going to look at the main structure of the contract, we're going to look at the flexibility, and also the main sections. So by the end of this video, you're going to know your way around this contract. So let's get into it. The engineering and construction contract has six main sections. These are the core clauses, the main option clauses, the dispute resolution clauses, the secondary option clauses, the schedule of cost components, and the contract data. Now we're going to go through each of these sections in more detail, and I want to start with the core clauses. The core clauses are common across all engineering and construction contracts. So irrespective of the main option that's selected, these clauses will be present. Now the core clauses are general, main contractor's responsibilities, time, testing and defects, payment, compensation events, title, risk and insurance, and termination. So like I say, these are going to be present irrespective of the main option that is selected. So let's move on to the main options. The ECC has six main options. These are options A to F. Now option A is a price contract with an activity schedule. Option B is a price contract with a bill of quantities. Option C is a target cost contract with an activity schedule. Option D is also a target cost contract, but this is with a bill of quantities. Option E is a cost reimbursable contract. And option F is a construction management contract. Now, each of the main options in the ECC has its own set of main option clauses. And when that main option is selected, the main option clauses are added to the core clauses. Now, in the, in the ECC, the main option clauses are presented in bold text. Now, this is to distinguish them from the core clauses. If you'd like to know more about the main options, please be sure to check out our other video where we go into each of them in more detail. So now let's move on to the dispute resolution clauses. The ECC has two dispute resolution options, which are W1 and W2. Now W1 is the standard dispute resolution option that's selected for ECC contracts, and it can be used around the world. Now W2 is specific to projects that are undertaken within the UK and also fall within the definition of a construction contract as set out in the UK Construction Act. Now, both of these options allow the parties to the contract to refer a dispute to an adjudicator. So let's move on to the secondary option clauses. The ECC has 19 secondary option clauses. There are 15 X clauses, 3 Y clauses, and option Z. Now, it's not necessary to include any of the X clauses but they are there to provide a flexibility to the employer to include things such as delay damages or limitation of liability, retention. The X prefix identifies the clauses that can be used all around the world in any country. And the Y clauses are followed by the initials of the country that they're intended to be used in. So for example, YUK1 is intended to be used within the UK. Now, option Z is the section of the contract where the employer would include additional clauses. Now, if you've had experience of even one NEC3 contract, then you'll know that there are often multiple Z clauses, which can bring with them their own interest in challenges. So let's move on to the schedule of cost components. The ECC has two schedules of cost components the schedule of cost components and the shorter schedule of cost components. Now the schedule of cost components is used for options C, D and E and its purpose is twofold. Firstly, it provides the definition of components for which the contractor will be paid and secondly, it also defines the components that will be included within the assessment of compensation events. Now the shorter schedule is used with options A and B to provide the definition of defined cost. And finally, let's move on to the contract data. 
The contract data is a very important part of the contract, and unless it's completed in full, you cannot have a complete contract. Now, the contract data is split into two sections, part one and part two. Now, part one is completed by the employer, and it includes things like who the employer is, what main option clause has been selected, which secondary option clause has been selected, who the project manager and supervisor are, and what the work's information is. Now, with part two is completed by the contractor, and this will include things like who the contractor is, what their defined fee percentage is, what their price for the contract is, and who the key people are. Now, it's also worth noting that depending on which main option is selected and which secondary option is selected, then additional statements and sections are added to the contract data that need to be included or completed. So this video has provided an overview of the six main sections of the engineering construction contract. We've gone through each of the main sections and I've given you a brief explanation of each of them. And I hope this has provided you with a better appreciation of the structure of this contract. Now, if you'd like to know more about the NEC3 or other construction related topics, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so as soon as we release our next video, you'll know about it. Thank you for watching. It's been great to have you. This has been Construct Academy.